You drink a lot of Diet Red Bulls before this. If you notice a ramp up in energy followed by a significant crash two thirds of the way through this video, that's what that is. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen where Pip Pip Cheerio and all that bro. <laughs> Is that a good British? <laughs> I felt like the, the person who's serving all of her twists like blah, 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 blah. I thought, more? When I first heard the term full English, I thought it meant, hold on, we never landed on a good joke, but let me audition some. So here we go, here we go. When I first heard the term full English breakfast, I thought it was when you just ate McMuffins with Jeffrey Rush, Alan Rickman, and Colin Firth. Those are three British actors, everyone. Okay, that's not good, that's not good. When I first heard the term English breakfast, I thought it was like an American breakfast, except you could only play with your feet. Like soccer, that's American American football. Okay, um, <clears throat> when I first heard the term English breakfast, I thought it was, uh, when, 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 when you had a breakfast burrito, but had bad teeth. <laughs> These are British stereotypes. So anyways, whatever, whatever one of those works best for you in post, pick that one, or you vote on your favorite. And just imagine that I only said that one. Anyways, I am a huge fan of breakfast burritos. You know it is one of my favorite foods. It is a huge LA tradition, especially with the hangover. The full English breakfast, AKA the fry up, is also one of the world's great foods. And today, no one asked us to. A lot of people are probably gonna be mad that we are doing it. We're gonna smash them together. Let's get to it. We've broken the recipe now into three distinct steps-ish. Right there, you can snag the time codes if you're following along at home. Is anyone like cooking this live? I was falling all full. Oh, come on, come on, be. Oh, I gotta wait 10 hours for the beans. For the full written recipe, we got it down there in the description. Let's get cooking. I made a bunch of A plus 10 out of 10 jokes about what a full English breakfast isn't. We should probably talk about what a full English breakfast is. So, you got your black pudding. That's the, I believe, a Scottish. I've only eaten it at Scottish fairs. So you got your black pudding. That is made with pork blood and a bunch of spices. We're gonna work on that. You also got your English baked beans, which I'm a huge fan of because I much prefer beans to potatoes in about any form. You got your fried eggs, you got your roasted mushrooms, you got your roasted tomatoes, you got bacon, you got more sausage in there, and then some like fried bread or fried toast. Really rad combination of foods. Uh, we were trying to think, how do we fuse them? We were like, we can probably make a chorizo spice black pudding. Um, then we realized we don't know how to make black pudding at all. So we came up with this. You'll see. We're gonna take a little bit of just straight pork fat. We're gonna get that going in a pan. <laughs> you listen to that sizzle. And then we're gonna add some onions to it. So what I didn't know, I'd never made black pudding. I'd obviously worked with a lot of blood. Pork blood is one of my favorite products to work with. Did not know that black pudding is only blood and there's no meat in it at all. I at least thought it was like a 50-50 ratio. Turns out just coagulated blood. Typically it is made with dried pork blood. We couldn't find that. So we got wet pork blood. Figure, you cook wet, it turns dry. That's how science works. And so we're gonna start just dumping a bunch of pork blood into a blender. And this is what's gonna happen. I don't, I don't think I need all that pork blood, but I also don't wanna drip on everything. And just drip on the counter, there we go. And chilies, because chilies are a big part of chorizo. I made my own fresh chorizo a lot before. So we're gonna take a little bit of ancho chili. It's a little bit milder, got some nice fruity flavors to it. I'm gonna drop some of that in there. And then a couple uh, California chilies. We're just gonna, yeah, get some nice chili flavor in there. Spices. All of them, just all of them, because this is gonna be gnarly, dude. Like, are you serious? This is wild. Just straight cooked pork blood with some oats, oregano. That's nice in, in chorizo, we like that. We love oregano, get a lot of that in there. Makes it taste really nice. Sage is a great breakfast sausage flavor that I really enjoy. Pump some of that in there. We got, what do we got here? Pasilla chili powder. Uh, Pasilla chilies are dried poblanos. Yes, there's, there's like some equivocation because poblanos are listed as pasillas in California and nobody knows why. I've went down the rabbit hole, it's pretty wild. Okay, so we got that and then we got this either garlic or onion, doesn't matter, just start popping spices in there, dude. Uh, it's gonna be pretty nuts. And then hot paprika, again, that's gonna make it red, except it's not because this is all just gonna be super brown. Vinegar is one of the main components of chorizo. Chris just told me that I don't take any breaks between words or sentences and I feel like no more was that exemplified than right then, so we're gonna take some vinegar and we're just gonna add that to the blood. That's gonna give us a nice little bunch of flavor. We're gonna take, uh, I was gonna say salt, but we don't need salt where we're going because we're just going Tony Sachery's more spice. If we didn't think there was enough chili flavor in there, dump a whole lot of that in there. And then uh, oats, healthy. Is this like cooking? What the f We're gonna dump in some oats. Oats are what's really gonna soak up all the blood and give it some nice starchiness to it. Uh, you could use buckwheat. I say that as, what, do you, do you have buckwheat? Oh, what are you growing sorghum for the harvest? No, use oats. Dump some of that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want a lot of pork fat and a lot of blood in there, and then some garlics. And then what else we got? Some nice Christmassy spices. This is Chinese five spice. Seems like it wouldn't go in there. It does. Again, if you're making this at home, why? <laughs> MSG, delicious. Got a lot of that off one little punch. And then nutmeg. Ah, delight. 
Good little sausage place. <coughs> you could have diet Red Bulls before this. If you notice a ramp up in energy followed by a significant crash two thirds of the way through this video, that's what that is. And a little bit of nutmeg. Put the onions and the fat in here. After they saute, it doesn't matter. We're gonna saute it all together. Uh, chorizo, there's two kinds of chorizo, right? You got Mexican chorizo and you got Spanish chorizo. Chorizo in Spain is typically chorizo seco, which means dry chorizo, so it comes more of a salami. Mexican chorizo is uh, chorizo fresco or a fresh salami, which means it's wet. You know how much I love me a good wet sausage. Not a sexual innuendo, just like wet sausage. It can be both. Okay, blend it. Ah, oh, cheese and rice, it was already on high. That's good. That's what we want to see. So we're blending all the garlic and the spices, the pork blood. I don't know. That wasn't the off button. That was the off button. Um, it smells nice and fragrant. It smells nice and fragrant. I know what you're saying. Josh, this is a blood smoothie. This isn't no sausage. Well, presto changeo. Watch what the hell is going to happen here because this is pretty nuts. We're going to put a lot of oil in there and then we're just going to... There it is. Yeah, you're going to see the blood is just blood. Uh, and it's gonna go in there and then we're essentially gonna scramble the blood. And yep, yep, just really burning onto that pan. Yeah, this looks all kind of fudged up, dude. Well, we're gonna let this cook for about five minutes, get it nice and just get a little bit more fat in there. That'll help. Uh, it may a little greasy. Uh, cook this for about five minutes and check back. A lot of people insist on licking the brownie batter spoon. Look the blood rizzo spoon. Beans, English, you love them. You love them, and I get it. I get it, dude. Beans on toast, what a delicious freaking dish. Uh, I, I think that is a pinnacle of cuisine. And so now we're gonna make English baked beans. It's similar to American baked beans, just like a little less flavor, in my estimation, right? That's kind of like a fair thing to say. You know, there's a little less spices, a little, a little, a little less heart in there. And people are like, oh, the English, they didn't, the climate was, y'all went all across the globe for spices. You come back to eat uh, uh, cabbage and potatoes? Come on, get the heck out of here. So we got, we got brown sugar, uh, we got salt going in there, we got a little bit of black pepper, we got onion powder, we got garlic powder. I know what you're saying, Josh, you could've just bought the Heinz baked beans in a can that they love so much in England. I mean, we can just kinda we can make it ourselves. Cause we're also gonna refry it. Um, yes, we are doing refried English beans. I'm a big fan of beans and breakfast burritos. I think more people should do that. That's tomato paste going in there. We also got some ketchup. Also a big fan of ranch on breakfast burritos. You get down to Lucky Boy in Pasadena and they just give you a side of ranch with your breakfast burrito and that is a place that knows how I like to live. And then Worcestershire sauce, or in British, Worcestershire, Foster's, <laughs> it's British for beer. <laughs> and then we're adding some chicken stock to that as well. And then we're just gonna add in some great Northern beans that have been pressure cooked, it's like they're from a can. They were like pressure cooked by someone, it just wasn't me, but trust, rest assured that they were, rest assured is kind of how you pronounce Worcestershire. Is that, did that happen in all, in all your minds too? I said rest assured and you're like, no, it's Worcestershire. <laughs> Anyways, Worcestershire that the Great Northern Beans were pressure cooked by somebody. And we're just gonna add that to a pot. You know the one thing, I had spent approximately four hours in England, it was at the Heathrow Airport, I had a layover before I went to France. It is harder to communicate with people in England than it is in France. Because in France, at least you can say like, je ne parle pas français, like you can say like, I don't speak your language. But when you're at like a convenience store and someone goes, do you pee in a baguette? You can't go, I'm sorry, I don't speak British. You can't say that. You speak in the same language, but you're not. Turns out a pee is a pence, and it costs two pence for a bag, so two pee in a baguette meant that, you know, anyone else have that experience? Just me, I'll go fruit myself. We're gonna cook these down for a while. Check back, check back in a minute. Check back, I'm gonna go back to my, my blood rizzo spoon. Well, we already made black pudding chorizo, chorizo and black pudding, two kings of the sausage world now, two bean juggernauts collide in refried English baked beans. We're gonna see how this goes, man. All right, I'm taking a solid brick of lard. Yep, just get that melting in there. And then I'm gonna take these English beans and I'm gonna pop them in there and I'm gonna mash them. This is how you do a refrito, so refried beans. Eh, get some more lard in there, why not? You can't take it with you when you die. That smells like straight just melted pig and I love that. All right, lard's gone, lard's gone. Crank the heat up on that. Yeah, all right, so now we're gonna take some beans and right into that hot lard. Yep, it's pretty exciting for me. And now we're gonna mash the beans a little bit. What I would typically do at home is I take like half the beans and I just pop them in the uh, in the old blender and then get that going in the lard. But nope, not here, uh-uh. They're done, I don't know why you're waiting to cut the cameras. This is all that happens. We just mashed the beans, man, that's it. That's it, turn the damn camera on, turn the camera off. 
reckon I bit off more than I could chew with this one. I feel like the British have a pretty good slang for that. Like, oh, you've, you've crammed your wonkla or something, you know? Uh, but we're just, all we gotta do is keep forging ahead. We're gonna get a whole lot of oil in that pan. We're gonna start frying up some mushrooms. Mushrooms are a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of mushrooms. Uh, we're, just gonna, we're gonna start frying that up. We got eggs. We're gonna douse it in a little bit of salt. That's pretty rad. Now we got a uh, pan here. Eggs go into the pan. Eggs are like chickens, but it's the ovu ovu ovulatory sick. Uh, we're gonna crack an egg in there. I'm gonna go sunny side up on this. I think that sounds nice for me. Uh, if there wasn't enough liquid, our sausage is a black mush. Our beans are a kind of orangish mush. And then now we're just gonna get the bright yellow mush yolk. That yolk broke. Son of a biscuit! Mushrooms frying, that's pretty rad. I'm gonna go Colby Bryant. Fantastic. And now, uh, saute those mushrooms around. We're going to get declaze out with a little bit of Worcestershire. Mushrooms love. Now we're gonna fry up some tomatoes. I know what you're saying, Josh, never put tomatoes in a cast iron pan because they're acidic. The acid, something, something's the pan. Corrodes it or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a perfect person. All right, there's like limited space here. You can salt up tomatoes, get those frying. Ow. Get those frying there. That's pretty cool. And we're gonna, yeah, yeah, I want these tomatoes nice and fried. Cheese and rice, that's hot. My God. All right, Ugh. the salt vaporized from the heat. I don't know how many tomatoes I want in this thing. But that's that, ah, cheese, God dang it. All right, get some Worcestershire on them there, mushrooms. You're gonna kind of caramelize the Worcestershire in there. I don't know if that's common practice. I like Worcestershire and my mushrooms, that's pretty fun. And now the egg's going, get a little salt in the eggs. It's pretty cool. Let's just take a minute to look at this. What the hell have we done? What the, maybe, I shouldn't use that. I'm just gonna finger some of that. Well, actually, That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. All right, I like what's going on here. What's going on? You can smell that Worcestershire burning. I'm gonna go ahead and flippity flop that around there. Yeah, toxic fumes all abound. Those are good, keep that going. Eggs, those are still looking like eggs. If the heat gets too much on your cast iron pan, what you do is you take it off and you put it on top of your eggs. That's gonna help the eggs cook quicker. This is a classic British cooking technique because you're now creating steam on that pan and then you get this off of it. This is really what I do at home. This is how, this is how I cook. Did you think there was a possibility I'd put eight eggs into this? What did you mean? What? <laughs> what did Cole? <laughs> Cole just like, bowl of eight eggs. I don't know. All right, let's, let's leave that. This is, not, this is bacon, it's called bacon. The way I, there's like an English back bacon, we couldn't get it, you know? There used to be a British specialty shop in Burbank. Pandemic closed it, what are you gonna do? There we go. Back on the heat, back to it, boys. Right, back to it, lads. There we go, mushrooms almost done. Check on these tomatoes. Nice and charred, that's looking good. We're gonna get a little more oil in there. Just douse the whole thing in oil. Just, if there wasn't enough lard in it already, where it's about to be. I just want to revisit this. What the hell happened? Maybe we could just drop this in the front. Well, right, I got an idea. Hold on. Kobe. There we go. Yeah, now it's a fry up. Okay, let's get some sausages in there too. Got some sausages. A little bit of oil in the sausages. Get some bacon on top of the mushrooms. Now we're frying up, lads. Now we got it going. This is it. <laughs> Eggs are done. Uh, ish. Well, maybe. Eggs need about one more minute. Now we got all this black pudding chorizo. Just, that is maniacal. What the? That is pretty good though. I can't stress that enough. Now the eggs are done. Sausage, bacon, mushrooms. Just how they do it in uh, Leicester, city in England. Cardiff by the sea. We're, we're doing a Welsh fry up now. Old English geography joke there. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna flip the tomatoes. Yeah, those are looking nice. Yeah, I got some of the, the blood on them. I'm gonna chop up the blood, get it nice and crispy. Tomato, mushrooms. I've just been saying the names of all the ingredients for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Tomatoes, mushrooms, eggs, bacon. Mushrooms there. And then, what? We got eggs. All right, let me, here. Let's see if I can kind of slop all the stuff on top of there. That's looking pretty good. Get some sausages, some mushrooms. Cause here's the thing, it's all going to burrito. You know, I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh God. It's like my grandma is like pretty British. You know, South African, eh, close enough. And so I was like, Americans are slobs. And I'm like, I don't think so. As I'm just slopping pork blood on my pork sausage. She also Jewish, doesn't eat no pork. All right, tomatoes are done. That's good. Get that in there. Yeah, nice little fried tomato. I feel like this one, you just get some beans in there. Give those another little whirl. Get them back in there. I want it to absorb all the flavors that we've got going in this cast iron. Listen, I wish we could have a giant griddle and like plancha situation figured out. Eat some of this bean sausage. All right, let's build a burrito. Where are tortillas at? All right, we got our tortilla. We're just gonna go ahead and griddle it right in this here pan. 
There we go. As you do with a traditional English fry up, you want to steam the tortilla over all that burning Worcestershire sauce. That's looking good. That's nice, because then if you look it up, you kind of get a nice little residue on it, and then you can get it onto your griddle. There we go. What's this? this is just for later. This is lunch for tomorrow. Nobody, nobody throw this away. This is my lunch. Thank you. All right, uh, ain't no proper order. The British people are gonna get pissed off no matter what, so let's just do it. All right, refried baked beans with some uh, mushrooms kind of still stuck in there. Get a big layer of that down. That's nice, I want a pretty bean heavy burrito. I like to spread my beans kind of towards the edges a little bit. Let's, see, let's get some beans back up. Oh, that's a whole piece of bacon. <laughs> that's lucky, you get a whole piece of bacon in your beans, that's lucky. All right, all right, there we go, there we go, there we go. And then now I feel like we should go eggs. <laughs> just flop those in the middle. Should have done like a long line of eggs and then we're gonna get these burning hot tomatoes. Right in there, that's cool. And then, um, where does he start unloading this? Let's just get, yeah, I feel like this is probably just the way to do it, right? <laughs> Hell yes, dude, this is gonna be so good, I don't care. All right, there we go, kind of smash it up. And this is the best British food has ever looked. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's fold her up, fold her up. <laughs> no, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. It's cool, baby, stay cool, honey bunny. There we go, massage it out. Wrap with the pinkies. <laughs> don't get the Band-Aid in there. <laughs> I said earlier how wet this was gonna be, and boy howdy is it. All right, now we're gonna lean off. That is a fat burrito. That's a British coal miner burrito. It's like, they're from like Nottinghamshire, and they're just like going to work in the mines, and these are the people that would just eat the sandwiches just filled with fries. It's just like, bread, butter, and chips, what more do you need? Trevor, I need foil. Trevor, foil. Can we foil to wrap this? Because it's not gonna hold up on its own. This is already breaking. Um, Country of England, if, if you'd like me to come open up, me and Trevor are gonna come open up breakfast burrito shop. If what you saw today impressed you, leave a comment, and we can maybe start a GoFundMe. Well, take this. Don't look at it. If, if this impressed you, you know. Queen, if you wanna knight me for this, that'd be pretty cool. I think it'd be a good opportunity. Okay. I don't like what you did to Meghan Markle, though. Cut it out. Be nice to her. She's a nice lady. Straight. Ah, uh, this is a full English breakfast breeder. You can't see it because it's covered in foil. Before I cut this open and reveal what devil lies within, I'd like to apologize to the sordid food folks. They're, they're nice British people. They didn't deserve it. People are gonna tag you in this, uh, and I'm sorry. I just like to say that. Uh, Jamie, you especially, man. You know, anyways, let's try it. Let's see what's up. All right, I already split a little bit. I'm going back to the, I'm going back in the foil. I'm going back in the foil. We're just gonna cut through the foil. Sometimes you get little foil bits in your mouth when you do this, but that's okay. That is brutality. Let's go. This is gonna rule. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's hope there's no foil shards. You gotta peel it back. Hold on. Hold on, this is gonna be good. You, you got the yolk, there's no foil, it's a lucky day. Hold on, I'm gonna pull out a little bit of my favorite British hot sauce though, the Sir Kensington Spicy Brown Mustard. <laughs> and we're gonna mustard up this first bite. There we go. <laughs> it's so good. The refried beans with a little bit of sweetness. You see that blood chorizo that we actually got pretty crispy in that pan. Remember when we started throwing everything in that pan? Now we're frying up, lads! The blood's pretty good, man. The roasted tomato is what makes it. Full English fry up breakfast burrito. You win, England, I'm sorry for all of this. Uh, but my God, this is a delight. And so the mustard. Cooking is easy, man. Let's go spork someone. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Josh. Would you like to, what the, what are you, what's going on? What? God, I kind of love that. I feel like I could start a cult with that image. <laughs> uh, I haven't worn that pink hat in like two years. <laughs> uh, do you want to try the full English breakfast burrito? I really do. Please, please, please. Oh it's it's hella greasy. It is just covered in that oh here. You gosh. feel me? Ooh. I'm going to just kind of uh, support you with the spork because I don't uh, want to ruin it. Uh, I don't okay. want to ruin your burrito eating experience. Yeah, so prod at it. Just... If you have any questions about the ingredients, ask me after you I eat I see it. so many things. There's just like so many ingredients. It's like staring into the void. Oh my God. It's kind of so brutal. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's, yeah, do it. Okay, ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Josh. Josh. 
What? How do you do this? It's good, right? This is so good. Yeah, there's so much just wet pork blood in there. You don't have any pork blood allergy, right? I don't. But, thank goodness. Yeah, we made a black pudding chorizo that was really just pork blood and oatmeal. Uh, and somehow it tastes like that. Or isn't it shocking? Why do I still want to eat it after I know. hearing that? I don't know. We can't miss. We cannot miss the mythical kitchen. It's stupid. We should not. We're not like lying. If something sucks butt, I say it sucks butt. This rules. And Matthew would tell you. This rules. I would tell you. And never lie. Some witch has cursed us to just be able to make the gnarliest food. Cooked in the gnarliest way is beautiful. Matthew, I'm glad you shared this with us. I am glad too, Josh. Thanks, man. And thank you all for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast. I'm breathing heavy from how much sausage I ate just cooking this. <laughs> uh, we got new episodes of our podcast every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, hit us up on Instagram, probably, at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food, just like Emma did. Emma was vegetarian for 10 years until she made our janky rotisserie chicken recipe on the uh, twin towers of freaking foil. Uh, good job, Emma. That was a heck of an undertaking, and I'm proud of you. Not for eating meat, but you know, if you're happy with your decision, I'm happy with your decision, uh, but not. Bye. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Hill Strike tea now at mythical.com.